This video is my official apology to Arsenal. I'm sorry, Arsenal fans. There's a video of me from three years ago. Well, nearly three years ago, 2021, that popped up and up and up again of me mocking Arsenal. We, we can play it. I don't want to play it because it makes me look like an absolute idiot. But this is my apology. I'm going to talk about in this video why I think Arsenal can win the league, uh, why I think they're brilliant, and just an apology to Arsenal. But... Ugh, I don't want to play this. Arsenal Football Club, you are a mess. You've now spent more money than Manchester United this transfer window. And who the fuck have you brought? Odegaard, Ben White, Lukonga and Tavares cost you more than Sancho and Varane. If they get Ramsdale as well, they would have spent 150 million on this. Well, Odegaard was 35 million, to be exact. Now, I get that Arsenal can't attract players like Manchester United and Chelsea can attract. But to spend almost 150 million on that if they get rams there was just a disgrace from the club that could not have aged any worse and i apologize it's been three years and i i do officially apologize now i got it wrong i knew i got it wrong after about six months when i was bragging about manchester united signing ronaldo sancho and Varane for arsenal to have a miles better season than us and to be fair for context i did say that i think i thought odegaard would be a very good sign for 35 million but I, I wasn't sure about Arsenal and Arteta back then. And yeah, I got it wrong. That was probably my worst take I've ever had because it's the one that haunts me to this day. It's got nearly 200,000 views. And this is an official apology to Arsenal. But also, let's talk about Arsenal this season. That's three years old. You know, that is well in the past. That, but I do think on the line of that, it made me think. I think Arsenal have been the most disrespected team this season. We're going to talk about Arsenal and break through their players. But when I look at it and I look at the tight race, Liverpool City, Liverpool City, Arsenal are in there. But as soon as Arsenal had a blip in January, they were wrote out the tight race. And I said, that's a bit silly. But Liverpool and City are still like the bookies' favourites. And I get that Arsenal bottled it last year. But Arsenal are a different team. They've got a different mentality. You can see that that way. And I think maybe they have been the, the most overlooked team in this title race. But it's in their hands. They can do it. They've beat Liverpool. They've beat Manchester City this season. Arsenal can do it. 26 goals in the last six games. They beat Liverpool 3-1 and played well. Liverpool are one of the best pressing teams in the league. The way they played out from the Liverpool press was unbelievable. They've beaten Liverpool and Manchester City this season. Something they could not do last season. They could not beat Man City. And when they beat Liverpool and Man City, it was deserved wins. And Liverpool were all over Manchester City when Liverpool played Man City last week. So when Arsenal got a big game kind of against Man City, you do, even though it's at the Etihad, you do kind of fancy Arsenal a bit. I think the players are just more mentally prepared this season. Last season, they dropped off. Um, they dropped off last eight games of last season. They bought the league. But January was a mentality test. You know, this January, and I said this, I did a video in January in the, in the, in the break. I said, this is a mentality test because Arsenal will either come back better than ever from the Dubai trip and prove that they're strong and they've got that winner's mentality or they crumble. And if they crumble, they haven't got it to win the league. If they come back stronger, they've got the mentality to win the league and they've got the mentality to win the league and they've got the best goal difference. And I always say sometimes when, when you judge a team, yeah, sometimes looking at goal difference is such an indicator of how much a team deserves to be in their position. You know, I look at Manchester United with bad goal difference and teams that are maybe only a point below us but have much better goal difference. And I'm like, realistically, they've been better than us. We just have the quality to get over the line with Bruno doing a moment of pass of magic and Hoyland scoring at nothing. You know, Manchester United is sixth and could finish fifth or fourth, but we really have not been good enough. We just got that maybe quality. Um, I'm Man United fan. But I, I look at Arsenal, I think they deserve to be top. I think Liverpool deserve to win, City deserve to win, but I think Arsenal also deserve to win. And you can't take that away from them. They've got the best defence in the league. Their defensive statistics are insane. They 100% deserve to be at the top. They've got the best goal difference. They play some of the best football and they've really, really kicked on in January. So what is different as well? Um, I think there's a lot of things different, but even when they weren't at their best at the beginning of the season, they got results over the line. And with that Luton game, did Havertz score the winner? There was just results that got over the line. Um, and I think, you know, when you are when you win stuff, when you win titles, Man City have games where they're not at their best and they win it 2-1 and they weren't good, but they got that win. And you've seen that with Arsenal against Brentford. They were dominant at Brentford, to be fair. Brentford defended well, but you saw it with Arsenal that got over the line. You know, they don't have a 20 goal striker yet and they're probably going to add that in the summer, which means they're only going to get better. They don't have that perfect left centre mid yet, although 
I think Declan Rice can fill in there, but he's just so good as a six. And Timber's not been used. And I was raging when Arsenal signed Timber because honestly, I thought he was going to be signing at the summer. I did the video saying Timber will be signing at the summer. So I, I praised Arsenal signings this summer, but three years ago, I look like an idiot. Uh, the development tactically. Kai Havertz has really come on, particularly the second half of the season. Ben White's really come on his own. You can see the importance of Jorginho. Arsenal making a box midfield in the big games with Havertz 9, Jorginho in a box midfield. It's how they've managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Liverpools and the Manchester Cities. I've put Ben White in there twice, but he's been so good. His ability to invert, his ability to overlap. He's becoming a proper fullback. He can play centre-back. He can play DM. He can play right back. He can do everything. His versatility, David Ryan and build up has been so crucial to Arsenal. It's a big, big thing, obviously, letting go of Ramsdale, but it's worked. Then, of course, Martin Odegaard, most open play chances created in Europe in that kind of free role. And what I've noticed about Arsenal is they start the first 15 minutes of the game so quick, so electric, causing so many problems. And because they go 1-0 up so early on and their defence is so solid, you know they've won it. And if you look at Arsenal's defence, these are the three players that stick out. Gabriel and Saliba, what a partnership, what a pairing. I think both of them have been fantastic. Saliba's obviously the guy that's sort of known as being that brilliant, you could arguably say, world-class defender, which kills me to admit that. But he's phenomenal. One on one, he reads the game so well. He's quick. He's athletically good. He's a good box defender, good jaw winner, good on the ball, good in build up. Declan Rice is just everything you want in a player. You know, 100 million price tag, and no one's talking about it. That says all you need to know about Declan Rice. Interception monster, reads the game so well, cuts out those passing lanes, defensively so good, so aware, protects the back four, you know, stops so many transitions against Arsenal so he can push more men forward. But also with Declan Rice, he's so good on the ball. And we've seen that he's got the qualities on the ball. You can see why Pep Guardiola wanted him that. He's been sort of playing as an, an eight and, and had the license to move forward under Arteta and he's evolving into this all-round player that can do it all. I mean, he's swinging in corners. He's get, got over 10 goal contributions this season. You know, he's developing into, into a box to box. I mean, if there was one player I would sign Man United, it'd be Declan Rice. He's unreal. Kai Havertz has really developed. He started slow. You know, people were doing all Havertz's stats and talking about how bad Havertz was. But now he's got more goals than Hoyland, Rashford, Diaz, Kudus, Kuliseski, um, Sterling, Gapo. DRB this season while playing a lot of games in midfield, not just as a nine, uh, making those box runs in. And what Havertz gives Arsenal was chaos. He's unpredictable. He can play as a centre mid. He can play as a, he can play out wide. He draws defenders out wide. He got Canate set off. Centre backs have to follow him. He's a difficult guy to mark, and he gets in the right areas. And because he's unpredictable, and he causes chaos. He gives Arsenal this outlook. Yes, he's not the best in possession, but Arsenal have so many players that are so technically good and so technically good in possession. Um, that we know that they don't, they can have a they can afford to have a player like Kai Havertz in the squad that might not be the best in possession, but his movement, his running is so good. He indirectly causes so many goals just from his movement. He pre-assists a lot of goals, but also he he picks up at big times and gets those goals. He knows when to pick up. He's he's a defender's nightmare, and he's looking like the Havertz of Leverkusen. But also he gives Arsenal an outlet and build up. Arsenal are now probably the best team in the world at playing out from the press because of David Rye, but also because Havertz gives them an outlet to go long. Havertz also can go into midfield like he did versus. West Ham and win the ball against a physical West Ham side. He provides so much and you can see the value of Kai Havertz now. No one's questioning it. And David Ryan was one people question. Now, a lot of Arsenal fans love Ramsdale when I get that. I think he's a decent keeper. But I said David Ryan's a massive upgrade on Ramsdale and I've got a lot of hate from Arsenal fans. Uh, but I think you can see it now. I think David Ryan is a special keeper. He's a fantastic keeper. He's so good on the ball. He's so good in build up. He's really helped Arsenal because he can be that third centre back in build up and he's a top top goalkeeper there and I don't want to make this video too long Ben White spoke about him doing the overlapping his crossings really improved but he has the ability to invert in midfield he has the ability to play centre back he, he's Arsenal he, he's signed a new contract Ben White's been fantastic because him inverting in midfield has given Odegaard this license and more of a free role to really create and do stuff and of course, Martin Odegaard's been special, particularly the second half of the season. Post the January break, I think that he could have been. I think, realistically, Saka was nominated for Premier League Player of the Month. But I think when you actually deep it, the last two months, I don't think anyone's been better than Odegaard in the league. And this is coming from a Manchester United fan. He's sort of gone into this more free licence role because Jorginho and, and Rice have been behind him as Havertz has gone further up. And he's been doing really well in that free licence role. He's dropping deep to collect the ball when he's playing the ball, when he's creating chances, he's ping-ponging it around. I mean, the assist to Trossard in the Porto game was massive because, yes, Arsenal struggled to get past Porto, but there's such a well-disciplined side. You know, the Champions League isn't easy and the wins are all that, all that matter in knockout football. I'd rather win a game 1-0 and, and, and barely win than, you know, dominate a game but lose 1-0 and not get through. And Odegaard, you know, he has that quality in him that when Arsenal are struggling because, you know, a team like Porto is so compact, he can do that pass. And, you know, Arsenal got Bayern Munich next, but I actually think Porto is a harder game for Arsenal than Bayern Munich. 
I think Arsenal, when they're playing against a compact low block, is when they're more likely to struggle with defensive discipline. Bayern Munich are going to have gaps in their defence. I think that Odegaard versus Bayern Munich is going to have some game. And I think Arsenal can beat Bayern Munich. I, I really do. So I was just wanted to talk about Arsenal in today's video and sort of my apology video, because I think one of my worst takes, and it is three years ago, it's not like it was this summer. I did praise Arsenal a lot this summer, if you look at my videos and, and the signings they'd done. Um, but I think like three years ago, I was a cocky Man United fan because we'd finished second and we signed Ronaldo and we, we signed Varane and we signed Sancho. And I, I generally thought, well, Man United are going places and, you know, Arsenal, what, they finished eighth again and, you know, Odegaard's a good signing, but I don't know about Ramsdale, I don't know about Tavares, I don't know about this. I look like an idiot because what Arsenal did is, and and this is what I want Man United to do now, is they didn't sign big names. They signed young players and developed them under a good coach in Arteta. And that's all I'm begging Ratcliffe to do now. So this is my apology. And yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal scare me. They can win the double. Um, I think they can win the Champions League. I think they can win the Premier League. It's in their hands if they if they beat Manchester City. They can. Um, I mean, I'd rather Arsenal than Liverpool. Probably rather Arsenal than Man City. It's just that if Man City win it, you forget they've won it the next day because they've got about four fans. And because of their 115 charges, it doesn't feel it's like if Arsenal win the league, I'm going to hear about it for ages and it's going to bug me. With Man City, it, it, 115, you just think, eh, doesn't really count. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Bye.